and welcome to episode 188 of the Campus Comics Cast, where Shad will be moderating Mike and Scott as Mike stumbles over his words, and while Scott makes up information from midair. I am Scott Reed, and obviously the king of the comic book universe, and I am joined on this episode by... Mike Atchison. And Shad Schubert, the guy who keeps things organized. <laughs> And let me tell you, there will be no debate about the primary topic of this episode as we discuss the July 2024 Next Phase catalog, along with other pre-order items. So hopefully, whether you are on the DC or Marvel side of the aisle or hide out as an independent, there'll be something here for you. <laughs> wow, how was that for an intro? That was very <laughs> enthusiastic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. For you. For you for and only you. you. <laughs> That's right. I should do Uncle Sam pose, That's pointing my finger at the thing, but that would be, you know, copyright infringing on Freedom Force, or Freedom Fighters, excuse me. So, <laughs> All right, should we just jump straight into next phase before I say something else stupid? <laughs> yeah, let's go. I kind of like the idea of you saying more things stupid. I more mean, stupid. yeah, or, or invite me to because it's about 50% of what I say is that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's just go on to the next phase then. So I don't have anything until we get to DC. So uh, it's up to you guys to Ooh. take us through to page forty-eight. Well, well I, got I, a, I got a twenty-four. I don't know about you, Mike. I uh, oh gosh, I'm at page seven. Is that early enough? That's early That's enough. Great. And it's a Hoy Comics, and it's only because I've I've definitely become. It seems like it's just an automatic thing for me. I'm. It's kind of like tomorrow's. I'm always going to say something about Wrong Earth, whatever spinoff, whatever series is coming out that's in that universe, because I think Tom Pyre is a fantastic writer, and I think Jamal Eigel is a fantastic artist, not to mention Juan Castro. But So they're advertising on page 7 of the Next Phase catalog, the Wrong Earth Dead Ringers, uh, it's vi it's the trade paperback, and it collects the w Wrong Earth We Could Be Heroes 1 and 2 and Wrong Earth Dead Ringers 1 through 5. So it's it's uh, one of these days I think I'm just going to get all the trades instead of trying to chase down different single issues. It makes sense. I always consider, even though these are def different series, I often don't mention them mm -hmm. just because of the fact that it's almost like it's just a continuation. I really feel like this should be yeah. like Wrong Earth issue 12, you know, as opposed to, I think the first series was five, right? And then two and then five. So we've had 12 issues. Yeah. Well, then there was all those, there were some one shots yep. too, right? Mm -hmm. There was a couple yeah. one, sh one shots, yeah. Yeah, okay. But yeah, no, Jamal Igle's an awesome artist, so... And I, on page twenty four, Chad, did you? What'd you say your page was? Yeah, twenty four. Okay, then I, then I will let you take it. Oh, okay. All right. This is the airship. Uh, it's from the CEX uh, publisher, and it's a one shot set in eighteen ninety six, and it's about a woman, uh, one of the first women to fly an airplane. Uh, and it doesn't immediately sound like anything I would be interested in, except when they throw in the twist that it's a mix between real world historical events and ufo lore and so i was like well that's really cool kind of concept uh to see and the cover's really pretty uh the interiors look great so i this is something it's a it's a, a one shot so you don't have a lot of investment in it. it seems like it could be a pretty solid story yeah a lot of what you said is what made me also earmark it it's um of that era and i know it's way earlier than amelia Earhart, but i've always been a big amelia Earhart. Earhart fan. She's from Atchison, Kansas, as a matter of fact, over by Kansas oh, yeah. City. All right. And uh, yeah, so I uh, I seen this. Plus, I seen that it's um, historical, kind of in a historical fantasy, and I thought it looked pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I did see that in the catalog, and I, I I'm not really for sure why I didn't decide to mention it. But <laughs> I it probably is something that was definitely worth mentioning. So I'm glad you guys both commented on it so yeah i probably should add it to my list <laughs> i think it'll be a good one like shad said the art looks really good you... and it's a one shot that's the that's probably the reason oh, why yeah. it should almost yeah. be an automatic buy for a lot of people sure. because you know you get the complete story so yep. that's always that's always a plus i didn't see the page count on it though oh 28 pages so it's a this is pretty much a regular size right yeah regular size book so yeah okay 
I'm still not till 48. So. Yep, I'm I'm in DC now too. Yep, I'm okay. go right ahead, Scott. All right, so I got to scroll to get there now. So, uh, but page 48, we have the uh, Batman: The Long Halloween, The Last Halloween, issue number one. Now this is this is just a one shot two as well. No, it's now a ten issue series. Oh, really? So that's changed since this was. Oh no, there it is—an all new ten part mystery. Well, so last Halloween they... was originally a one shot last year, two years ago, mm-hmm. and they are now making right, that retroactively. That is issue zero of the last zero. Halloween series. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So, but I guess since we have lost Tim Sale, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. We have replaced Tim Sale with Eduardo Rizzo as the artist for one, yes. and they'll change out every. Oh, oh, just for one. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Okay. So I guess I should have spent a little bit more time reading the solicit instead of just looking at the pictures, huh? Is that what you're trying to tell? I, me? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a, sounds like a guilty conscience he's <laughs> down on himself. <laughs> okay. So for the record, for the record, I went through all these catalogs in about 90 minutes today. <laughs> yep. So I didn't get to go real in depth on anything. <laughs> so I was I really was primarily looking at the pictures and if the pictures wasn't enough to pull me in, I'm not probably not talking about it. Um, but yeah, I I did though take a minute to go over to my to read pile and see like well I thought we already <laughs> right. had this, but it was the special, which is still sitting over there in my to read pile. Same. I haven't gotten to it yes. yet. Yeah, so <laughs> That's super And of course yeah. we did the long Halloween for an episode, mm-hmm. didn't we? We did. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. So there you go. So probably, I probably will be picking this up, though. Uh, 55 is my next one. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So we do have apparently the final issue. And again, they're not real clear. Is this, uh, this is Detective 1089. So is this the final issue of the current story that Ram V is telling? Or is this Ram V's final issue on Detective or both, I guess? So they're not, again, abundantly clear. We knew it was the next to the last after last month's uh, next phase catalog. But now I'm still not for sure if we're going to see Ram V on 1090. And I have apparently had the page number down wrong. Yeah, I, this so isn't lining up 55. with what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah you have 58. So, okay, it's 58. Okay, yeah. sorry about that. 58, not 55 in the catalog. So... Again, have I mentioned that I went through this really, really fast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought I've this one up, this. though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been reading this, and it's been pretty good. I haven't it, it's, I haven't felt like it's been mind-blowingly good, but it's, again, I, it's kind of like that we've, I've said before. It's a, tie, it's, a, it's a story that won't make you want to rush over and start reading the book, but it's also a story that won't make you say, this is awful, and I'll make you drop the book. It's... It's a good just continuation of, of a Batman story. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those stories that I think it's it's going to reading it in trade or or mm-hmm. just long form. It's a it's a long story, and mm-hmm. I think Ram V is a good storyteller. It's just in serial format. I don't know about you guys, but I have a harder time with every year remembering what the previous months what happened. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. it's definitely something I would be maybe more apt to pick up a couple trades and read it straight through. All right. And then 59, anybody else want to talk about Nightwing besides me? I'd like to go back since uh, you said 55. I thought you were going to talk about what I was going to talk about. And that is absolute power task force seven, number seven. And I don't know if this is the final issue or not, but it's it on the cover. It's featuring Buona beast Mm -hmm. and what looks like, uh, Ghost Maker, one of the Maker. and mm-hmm. uh, Mirror Master, and is that okay. the the Superman from China, or Ooh. is that with the Yin and the Yang symbol? I mean, <sighs> so well, if it's, I don't think I, that can't possibly. That has to be one of those new, um, oh, like they did like the city and the oh yeah yeah right signal. right. Uh-huh. The, the, I, I think that's one of those characters. Yeah. The Vigil, yeah. yeah. I think it's one of Could those be, yeah. characters. I, haven't re- I have not read any of those books, so I cannot say for sure. But it's kind of weird that they list these as, you know, 
non superpowered heroes because she's like what wannabe sits his talisman or mask that gives him abilities. Yes, it's some sort of talisman. Yeah. So I would consider him a powered hero. Yeah. But that's again nitpicking. So. Oh, yeah, man. and I didn't <laughs> even know if they meant they were depowered from the villains or something and right. they were but anyway i just because mostly buona beast is the one mm-hmm. i thought i gotta mention that because you just don't ever see him in a comic anymore much less on a cover <laughs> oh. and then oh, okay i'm sorry i got i gotta throw this out here right now real quick so i a book i i bought a collection today and i'm flipping through and i still can't escape the apes because what do i get in one of these stories <laughs> Kong Gorilla. <laughs> I got a Kong Gorilla story in one of the comic books that I bought today. So lucky you. Yeah, lucky me. So <laughs> sorry. We now continue with your previously scheduled next page review. Well, the very next page is uh, it's a story or a book called Batman the Barbarian number one. It's one of six, and it's bu- going to be published by monthly, but. A couple things jumped out at me. First, that it's written and has art and cover by Greg Smallwood of the Human Target. Human Target series fame. And that was the first I'd ever seen of him, and he's unbelievable. Now, I don't know what kind of writer he is, but I would pick it up just for the pictures alone. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, stupid question. Yeah. Did the Human Target ever finish? Yeah. You know what? I hate the DC reading app. It's awful. Because it will not show you when a new book comes out oh. if you read the previous issue. Yeah. It's so bad. So I was reading this, and I don't think I finished it because it's not showed me that there's <laughs> been a new issue out. Oh. How long ago was that? That's been a while, Oh, it's probably. been almost a year, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not good. No, yeah. I had to go back and track that down. Uh, so. Yeah. But but the other thing about the Batman the Barbarian story is on this cover or this uh, solicit picture, it's basically a Batman with a sort of a bat cowl that looks like an actual bat. It's uh, and it reminds me of the Stan Lee oh, versions yeah. of DC heroes, the Batman. Mm-hmm. That's not a good. That's I know the good, story. Uh... Yeah, but they. <laughs> the, I was just reading yesterday. It was something that came out maybe six months to a year ago was other creators, writers, artists that were doing stories based on these Stan Lee versions of the DC heroes. And the Batman was actually a good story. It was, I forgot who wrote it, but anyway, it was, it was one of the headliners, but anyway, that's what he looks like. I actually thought that's who that was when I seen it, but apparently not. So, and then one more and then I'll shut up for a while. No, keep going. The very next page is not a comic, but it's basically a series of these Nicola Scott Through the Ages variant mm-hmm. covers. And I have the Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman variant covers that I picked up at somewhere along the way. I think I got them down there at King Comics in Sydney when I was there a few years ago. But they have now one for Green Lantern, Nightwing, Catwoman. Black Canary, which is like going to be a Birds of Prey variant cover, Zatanna, Harley Quinn, Supergirl, and Flash, and mm-hmm. I'm all about these variant. I'm not usually a variant cover guy, but I'm definitely all about. It. And they each, you know, the cover features the character with, you know, through the ages, obviously mm-hmm. with different uniforms and stuff. So pretty cool. Yep. Uh, 59, Mike, would you like to talk about Nightwing number 118? I mean, I had a mark, but you please go ahead. No, it's okay. All I have to say is that it's apparently it's final issue by Tom Taylor and yeah. Bruno Redondo, and who knows if one of them will stay on the book or if it's both of them leaving the book. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking it as both of them, it seems like. I mean, and it does make you wonder if they're going to, if someone, they're not really saying who's picking up Mm-mm. the next issue. So that, that kind of gives me a little bit of trepidation but yeah, if they don't want to steal anybody's thunder you know give mm-hmm. them a chance to do their send off in one issue and the next issue True. they can start talking up whatever's happening next so. right right it's been a great series but i haven't read a single issue of it i've just heard other people talk <laughs> about it <laughs> i'm the i'm the same way i've heard a lot of good stuff about the series and i know it's been fairly popular but i haven't read any of it either <laughs> uh, my next thing's on page 64 I'm not till 76. I'm 68. 
Okay, so 64, Batman Day, which is... What day is that? September 18th, I guess, because that's when all these books come mm -hmm. out. And, of course, on those Batman Days, they have usually a couple of really, really cheap uh, books that you can that you can pick up. So this time they have Joker, The World Special Edition is a cheapy Batman Wayne Family Adventures, which, based on the cover, looks more like a kid-friendly uh, story. Then they also have... I thought there was one more... Oh, Batman, the long Halloween number one Batman Day mm -hmm. edition, which I think would go back to the special edition that <laughs> came out however long ago, 32 pages. <laughs> the other ones are all regular price or more, um, including, you know, some of them that are like $7.99 for the, the Batman Day facsimile, uh, Detective Comics number 27 facsimile edition. So if you need your Detective Comics number 27 facsimile, you can also mm -hmm. get that with the Batman Day logo on it. Yeah. I'd say the one comic... If either one of you have not read it, that you should read is the Batman Elmer Fudd special. <laughs> it's it was great. <laughs> I think I did when it right. originally came out, but I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a noir edition. For mm, that that uh -huh. too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I mean I know what noir means, but I'm like, what? it's it's already kind of noir, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna assume it's all. I'm assuming it's gonna be black and yeah. white. Okay. Also, uh, so fancy way of saying black and white. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, and then my next thing, 76, which, Mike, I know you have 76 as well. So, Well, uh, I have 68, which is Action Comics 1069. And unless I'm mistaken, that's the first Gail Simone written Action Comics um, in an arc that she's writing with... Uh, Ra oh, am I wrong? I thought she her first issue was last month. It could I be. I thought it was you 10, know what? Here, I'll, I'll check. I'll check my I bet, notes yeah. while you keep going. Yeah, I. I mean, but even if it isn't, I mean, even if it's a second issue of the arc, it's got her and Rainbow Row, with which Rainbow Row has been uh, astonishing on on She Hulk, and with art by Eddie Barrows and Danny Miki and Cian Torme. I don't know those last two really, but uh, I think they. Their format for action comics right now is not a bad one because it's these established writers and artists that are kind of dipping in for a while and then hopefully keep the keep the sales up and then the next one rotates in. So uh, um, right now I'm kind of picking up. I'm not buying action comics every month, but I'm paying attention to who the creators are. I will definitely be reading those issues when they hit the app. Assuming that I can find them in these. <laughs> yeah, those apps. Yeah, that app. Uh, yeah, I'm try still trying to pull up my notes from last month. I thought we talked about Gail Simone on there last last month. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, well, I don't. Uh, maybe not. I don't. Ha well, I don't know why I wouldn't have had a note about that, but I don't see it in my. Notes from well, last month. While you're looking, Outsiders number 11 on the very next page, on page 69, mm -hmm. is... Uh, I, I didn't know this until uh, I heard it on a heard it on a podcast or read it on a website, but it's the last issue. They didn't plan on f finishing this soon, but apparently it wasn't doing well. And to be honest, it, it, it really lost interest. I lost interest after the first... After about the third issue. It just, just really didn't meet my expectations, especially knowing that Lansing and Kelly um, are a good writing pair. So, it's it's ending after 11. I'm going to stop looking, but it, it, maybe it is the first, but I, I know we talked about Gail Simone on action, and maybe we just talked about it from something else. Okay, so. alright. Uh, let's see, my next thing is on page, well, yeah, 76 still, so whatever you guys have before 76. Nope. That's it. Nope. Well, Mike, I know the character on 76 has a special place in your heart. You, I hate to say this, but no. <laughs> oh, it's, really? It's okay. Man. Well, I knew. Well, I thought you liked them both. Well, I knew. I knew you preferred Ralph Dibney. Yeah, I, I mean, oh yeah, I do like stretchy hero, heroes. Period, and I did have it marked down, but it's just <laughs> okay. recently I was. It, I had it pointed out to me. Um, uh, uh, an interchange between Ralph Dibney, the Elongated Man, and Plastic Man in an issue of Justice by Alex Ross and Jim Kruger, where Plastic Man was really dissing Ralph Dibney. And 
Now I'm like, I'm not even talking about you, Plastic Man. Nope. Oh, even okay. if I might have picked this up anyway, and I do have it marked down, I'm not going to talk about you because, but no, just kind of joking here. But it's it, it was. <laughs> I was like, whoa, they. I didn't like the way they wrote that. So, <laughs> but well, yeah, of course, it, it is written by Christopher Cantwell, mm-hmm, which is yeah. a plus. He's very mm-hmm. established, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's very. They describe it as body horror, and you can kind of mm-hmm. see on the cover. Um, that's one thing that differentiates. Eel O'Brien from Ralph Dibney is that his he goes beyond stretchy powers and he on the cellular level he is even uh, Morrison said that he was probably the most powerful or at least invulnerable hero in the DC universe at one point so I don't know I'd, I it's something I'd probably pick up just to see what what it's all about I I like to cover I'll say that when, I don't know why I, I just when I first glanced at this I thought this was going to be a black label book because they you notice how the background color changes from page seventy five yeah. to seventy six oh, so, yeah. so I kept I kept looking for <laughs> black label yeah on this on this and it's not apparently but it's like I, I was looking for it I thought man it's going to be a black label one but yeah huh. um, they don't I guess it's still I guess it's considered darker though because of the body horrors but it's not dark enough to be black label or I just wondered if they don't the, have black the, the label DCU. anymore. Look at the if you go to, to seventy eight you know, uh they don't have none of them are are tagged as black label and John Constantine Hellblazer has been a black label book. Oh. Nice house in the lake is So been. they're either mainstream or they're Elseworlds, I bet. Okay. If you go to the t- the table of contents for DC, it says black label, page thirty. So I guess that is the case. They just don't say black label. So Plastic Man is black label. Nice House by the Sea. Okay. Jenny Sparks. So I guess all of these with mm-hmm. that with that black background are actually black label books. And this, you know, just what you pointed out is that it really proves the point that's been made recently about the editorship at DC is really <laughs> flailing. It's just, I mean, they really need to do a better job of identifying under what umbrella different books fall under. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, I think it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's almost like they don't want this to be yeah. noted as a black label because they say, oh, if it's black label, it's not continuity. I don't have to read it. Right. Yeah, but that's... You know, but that's, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of weird. But yeah, especially when they have all cardstock covers. So I know one thing. I'm going to do a hostile takeover at DC, and I'm going to go in there and start getting <laughs> things right. Well, at the if, rate they're going, it won't cost you that much money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to do a, a quick uh, answering of the question, Gail Simone uh, was made her return to Superman for a three-part arc starting on 1067. Uh, so, oh, that actually, so this Lord. will be the conclusion yes. issue. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. brother. Okay. Everybody just disregard that. It, Scott could edit it out. Well, I'm happy, Mike. I'm happy that you pointed out that this was Gail Simone's final yeah. issue. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. Which it'll be on sh- the so, first one, 1067. Will be on shelves next Wednesday. So, from yes. when we're recording this on the 10th. <laughs> I am on the ball, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> and I am done with DC, Same. so I don't have anything else for DC. I got one more thing on DC that looked kind of in- interesting and. It's it's that DC's I know what you did last crisis now because I love crisis events mm-hmm. even if really none of them have you know uh, held up as much as the first one but this looks kind of cool it's you know it's it's like uh, it's it looks humorous it's 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 based I, I don't know I, they're every major crisis in DC history rises all at once so mm-hmm. I don't know maybe they're all like there's like eight stories in mm-hmm. the book maybe they're not interconnected maybe they are i don't know but they it includes stories from crisis on infinite earths millennium zero hour the final light and final crisis um i guess some more because that's not eight but that's what they list here <laughs> <laughs> all right anything anybody have anything from drawn and quarterly nope nope i'm, I'm not telling image. image yep okay so let's see i actually did have a distillery which is on page 113 through the red window. And this, the fact that Ram V will be uh, writing this book for 
a few issues makes me think that he probably is done on Detective, even though they haven't oh, yeah. said that he's done on Detective. But uh, also art by Joel Jones. So it's kind of a modern-day horror story. A, an apprentice kind of thinks he's going to get taken up to the next level, and they apparently go to some building, and, well, behind every single door there's a new monster or a new dark secret. So it's not quite the initiation into this uh, high-stakes, high-dollar world that he thinks it is. So modern horror from Ram V. Yeah, and apparently I... it's not page 113. So I don't even know what page it's on. It was on one. Oh, I just have it. One forty-four. One forty-four. So I've jumped way into in, our. It is distillery, though, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I had okay, a markdown yeah. too, I, and I thought it was after image, so I was. And maybe it is because I guess have I mentioned that I uh, didn't start this till today? <laughs> <laughs> distillery is before image. Okay, good. So at least I'm in the right order. Okay. Even though I have yes. The page. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there we go. Now I'm to image. Okay. I got 178 <laughs> as my first one in image. All right, you're before you're before okay. me. Okay. Uh, 178 is Knights versus Samurai number one. Um, I don't know. It's written by Dave Desmalchin. Uh He's done some pretty good stuff. Uh, most of it in Dark Horse uh, realm, and and it is exactly what the title says. There's no like it's knights fighting samurai. Uh, and so if you're into that as a concept, you know, like the idea of the crossover of the two uh, armies of, of things, check it out. <laughs> what page was that, Chad? 178. Okay, on 183 is where I am. Okay, just back on 169, this Dead Eyes, that used to be that Dead Rabbit series, right? That they had to change their name because of the lawsuit? Oh, yeah, I did hear that, yeah. Oh, I was, like, I, just, I, so. I was just double checking, making sure that I had the right. I just saw that again, and it just popped into my brain. It so was called Dead Rabbits before. Was. Yeah, Dead Rabbit, I think. And apparently, oh. it was a bar named Dead Rabbit. Yes, and yes, they, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and then they sued or sent a cease and desist oh, wow. to them because of the name, which doesn't seem like it would be an issue, right. but apparently it was, and they switched the name to Dead Eyes instead of All Dead right. Rabbit. That was a while okay. back. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm still at 189. I can't remember what you guys said. 183, I think, is what Atch said. Okay. Yeah, it's right. the Lady okay. Mechanica, The Devil in the Lake. Now, I've never read, read a single issue of any Lady Mechanica miniseries. I think it's one of those characters that it's like Hellboy. You know, you don't really have a series. You just have a series of miniseries. Mm -hmm. and, um, but this one, I was just I was looking through the art, and I thought, this is just fantastic. Uh, this art is, and I'm inclined to buy this just for that. I I really enjoy Lady Mechanica. I I read I think probably the first like seven or eight uh, mini series uh, of of her, and then I kind of just fell off. Uh, but I this kind of sparked my uh, like, ooh, I should probably yeah. go back to that as well. I think I avoided it back in the day because steampunk was just a little bit. I mean, it's like everybody was talking about steampunk, and I'm like, okay, I, I'm I'm not gonna <laughs> follow that trend. But now I'm, th I'm thinking I, I want to read it just because of that art and Joe Benitez. I didn't know it looks like he's the creator, yeah. And I've heard of his name before, so um, he's got some some street cred, as they say. <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he did all the uh, like the original few series. He did all the artwork for it as well. And uh, it is fantastic. That's his cover, I think, on that book, it looks like. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have 189? Nope. 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 Okay, I'm surprised because we have 189. We have The Moon is Following Us. This is a 10-issue series from Daniel Warren Johnson. Of course, we uh, talked about Daniel Warren Johnson with, what, Beta Ray Bill. Mm -hmm. and the, did, We haven't talked about Wonder Woman Dead Earth, but also did Wonder Woman Dead Earth. Uh, art by Raleigh Rossmo and Daniel Warren Johnson. So we have this uh, couple who have a six-year-old daughter who gets taken away by an evil force, and then they have to fight. But it's kind of, uh, well, it's in the art style that you would expect from Daniel Warren Johnson uh, and looks kind of interesting. Uh, it almost looks like a less mature version of Saga, just with characters and, mm -hmm. and things going mm -hmm. on, the fantasy element, so... Then on 196, anybody? Mm -mm. Nope. 
Yours. Okay, so the Ten Can Society. This is a nine-issue series uh, written by Peter Warren, who is apparently the writer of the Inkle, the Ink, I can't remember if Inkle or Inkle oh, okay. feature film. I, I haven't seen that. Is that even out yet? I don't I'm, think so. I, uh, okay, uh, so he's this is apparently his first dipping of his toes into comic books. So you have this, uh, oh, so you have this tech mogul who was really, really pioneering and uh, improving the lives of people with disabilities. And during that time, he became a super superhero, a vigilante, and he's found murdered. And then his, all of his childhood friends are going to try to figure out who killed him. So on a real, real superficial level, it kind of sounds like the plot of Plut- uh, Plutonia, but <laughs> With a little bit different, uh, a little bit different take on it. So huh. I, I thought it was interesting. It looks pretty graphic, though. By the way, for the record. Mm-hmm. So, well, my tender heart can't take too much graphicness. <laughs> 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 All right, two twelve is my next. Thing. I had two oh three. Is uh, violent flowers. Uh, it is a new series by Maria Lovett or Lovett. Uh, and uh, I have enjoyed her stories, uh, especially her artwork uh, on the the series I have read. I think Faithless is one of the big ones that, that she's done. Um, and uh, this one is about vampires and murder and cults and all kinds of cool stuff. So if you uh, like those things, this one might be a good one for you. <laughs> I noticed at the bottom of that page, it says, Also available Universal Monsters Dracula hardcover. Has that is that the first time that that's been mentioned in the catalog, or has it already been um, mentioned? Previously? I feel like it's already been solicited. I think it's even been out on shelves, maybe, because uh, because really? uh, okay. the creature Cause... issue two should be coming out like within the next couple of weeks, I think. Real soon. Okay. Okay. I just why was I thinking that Frankenstein launcher was the first one, but Dracula was right. the first yeah, one, Frankenstein's right? Yeah, Frankenstein just now the most recent solicited. One. Yeah. Solicited. Okay. What I right. don't know is why uh, that is also available under Violent Flowers because Maria Lovett has nothing to do with that book <laughs> with Dracula that I can recall. Well, I guess because it's vampires. Oh, they're just going vampire, vampire. Okay. They're just going vampire, vampire. If you like vampires, here's some more. Got vampires. you. Okay. So that makes sense. I think is the that's the connection. Yeah, I, I yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's a deep. I have a deep mind. <laughs> So, uh, I was overthinking that one. <laughs> they both said they both have vampire in the solicit, you know. So. It's like two plus two equals five for large values of two. Oh gosh. <laughs> God. Page page two hundred and twelve. <laughs> I, I looked at this page and I said, "Wow, local man is already at issue twenty five. How did that happen?" But no. They're skipping issues 13 through 24 and jumping straight to yeah. 25 to do a one-year look oh. into the future. Wow. I have never liked that. I didn't like it when we. I didn't like it when the, they did it in, in like the Legion of Superheroes. I didn't like it. Like was it pre or post New 52 when they did five years later? It just mm-hmm. it confused the heck out of everybody, including me, especially me. So yeah, this doesn't <laughs> not this does not impress me. Oh no. <laughs> I only glanced at this when I saw the 25, and I just read this part of the solicit. On the flip, a corporate retreat at 3rd Gen HQ leads to beach volleyball. Oh. Guess who now just got suckered into order? Nah, this nah, yep, yep, you have no choice. <laughs> that would be me. You I have, have no, no choice. choice now, so I have to order it, put in a big some exclamation points by that in my notes, so I don't forget to order that book. All right. <laughs> Oh, sometimes it sucks to be me. <laughs> My next thing's on page 323. I'm at 270. Uh, 305, so yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, you know what I said earlier about how I, you know, I can't do graphic graphic stuff, you know, I'm, I'm too tender-hearted. <laughs> well, it's yeah. as soon as I said that, then I realized uh, that my next pick was Plastic Death and Dolls, number four or five, and... You know, I, I I bring it up. I brought up every issue, you know, every month because Doug Wagner is somebody I interviewed. I've not really, honestly, I'm not 
I've never interviewed creators really, not for the show or anything else, but um, he was such a cool guy. I definitely want to plug the series. I have not picked up issue one yet, but I can't wait. And um, uh, this is just the fourth of five issues, and I strongly encourage. I, I read the first, you know, plastic proper series, and it was just awesome. But it's also graphic, so um, be forewarned, but have fun. Forewarned is forearmed. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm still scrolling. I'm nowhere near page 320. I got 305. Is... 305. I'm not there yet. I'm at 297. Okay. If okay. I... 297. Then 297 is you. Um, thank goodness this thing lets you do a word search. <laughs> okay, this is a publisher I've never heard of before. IPI Comics. It sounds like a craft beer. Um, <laughs> it's uh, they've got a book called Sherlock Holmes: The Dark Detective, mm-hmm. Claws of of the Chimera or Chimera, and I just like the look of it. I like the idea of Sherlock Holmes being uh, in a book that 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 is sort of dark like that. Uh, I've always been kind of a Sherlock Holmes fan. I've read a lot of the novels, yep. and anyway, it's a four issue series. And this is the first of them by Christopher Sequera, Philip Carnell, and David Elsie. If I remember correctly, they previously, this company, because they were, this is where they have the human fly. Yes. So they were, I think, were in one or two previous catalogs. And they also had another Sherlock Holmes, which I, maybe it was just a one shot where it was Holmes teaming up with somebody yes. else. And I think they had like multiple stories. Yep. Oh. Uh, so. Yeah, so you probably need to be looking for that book as well. Okay. Okay. All right. And I'm actually putting a reminder to order that one for myself as well because I also like Sherlock. Yeah. Holmes. <laughs> My favorite novel is The Hound of The Hounds of the Hounds or Hound of the Baskerville. It's always so shocking like <clears throat> whenever you read that for the first time the actual novel if you're used to watching all the old movies and such and then you read the first novel and learn that he's a cocaine addict <laughs> yeah. right out of the gate i mean that was like you know, but, but that was like, like yeah. normal back then they put it in coca-cola yeah I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, it's, just, it's just so this is so bizarre to me so. yeah <laughs> my next is on 305 Go for it. I think it's you still. Goodness gracious. How does that happen? Now, this is one I thought maybe Shad would um, pick up because it's kind of a horror-type book, but it's called... Mm -hmm. Did you? It's called The Body Trade, number one of five, and it's under Mad Cave, like I said, and the author Zach Thompson, artist jock, but not the jock we know, not Mm -hmm. J-O-C-K, it's J-O-K, and essentially this is an ex-con who gets out of prison and um, he goes to Florida to bury his son who he had fallen out with. He finds that he wasn't actually, he couldn't find the body and his, um, the body was actually sold, sold for whatever reason in the body trade. So it sounds cr- pretty creepy and pretty, I like kind of criminal stuff like that. It's like, you know, CSI Miami, but you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, so I, I could get into this, I think, and uh, I got it marked for that reason. And plus, I like Mad Cave mm-hmm. as a publisher. Yeah, and just a couple pages down is 309, uh, also in Mad Cave, uh, is the Prairie Gods number one, and this is by Sean, Shane Connery Volk, uh, who is the artist from Nottingham. Uh, and he's got his own series, and these are a series of one shots. Five, it's a five issue, uh, and they all center around these supernatural events that happen in this small town called Broad Acres. Uh, the first one is uh, around a champion race car driver uh, who returns home. So uh, it seems like it'd be a pretty cool, just series of one shots. But I always like when they do these, and they're based around a town like Stephen King. You know, has his kind of area that that everything happens around. These connectivity stories would be pretty cool, I think. Yeah, bang, Banger Main, and yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really like that cover. I mean, I like Shane Connery Volk. I like his art, and he has cover A, but cover B is by a guy named Jason Sean Alexander. I'm sure he had to put his middle name in there just not to be confused <laughs> with George Costanza. <laughs> but uh, I thought that cover is really cool. 
that split image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, since you mentioned the other two, we might as well mention the other Mad Cave issue number one, which is a dark, empty void. Mm -hmm. This is a sci-fi horror, se horror series. Uh, five issues written by Zach Kaplan, art by Chris Sheehan, about a stable microscopic black hole in a secret underground <laughs> compound, and it turns into a cosmic horror series. So, hey, what the heck? You got me at sci-fi, so <laughs> I, I'm adding it to my list just in case. There you go. I'm not telling. 323? Yeah. You got that, too? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you can take it. Uh, 323 is from Oni Press. It's the Autumn Kingdom number one. It's a four-issue series written by Cullen Bunn. Artist uh, is Christopher Mitten on it. And uh, this is a folklore horror story uh, about this uh, author who moves his family to a remote cabin so he can finish his latest novel. And when his daughters go exploring, uh, they come across these ancient statues that end up following them back home and snatching their parents, and the girls have to kind of figure out, obviously, how to get their parents back. Um, so a little bit of a, a kid saving the world kind of situation, but, I, I mean, Cullen Bunn has got to be more than half. Half of the stuff he puts out is pretty good, I would say. So Yeah. Uh, and you reading you reading the solicited sounded better than when I read it myself. <laughs> so <laughs> It definitely has a little bit of a Harrow County uh, right. feel because it's about – you know, younger girls, and that's kind of what he wrote. There was a couple of girls in that that were the featured characters in mm -hmm. Earl County. Mm -hmm. So it definitely has that kind of a feel to it. Lots of different uh, variant covers mm -hmm. as well. Uh, 362 is where I get to next. Uh, I got 357. Somebody going to talk about? No, I'm done with this yeah. catalog. Oh, wow. Okay, so... So 350 something shad. 357. Yeah, out of Scout is uh, this one shot called Commercial Space, and it is uh, for fans of The Office and Parks and Recreation. Uh, it is based on a somewhat true story about a couple who inherit an office park and they're stuck with uh, a bunch of tenants that are wild and they have to figure out how to turn a profit. It just sounds like a day in the life of kind of comic, and you don't see those a lot of times. And mm -hmm. um, so I was like, well, that would, as a one shot, once again, kind of like the the airship uh, one at the kind of the beginning of the uh, mm -hmm. catalog. It's just that one shot uh, could be funny, uh, real basic story. I like it. All right, 362. We have talked about this before. So I am not for sure why we are getting this solicited again. I, I, I guess maybe it didn't come out, so we're actually just not getting around to finishing it. But what we have is Mom Breaks the Internet, number one, nonstop. And what all the nonstop means is that apparently they're going to give you the first issue and then give you the collected one, the collected edition after. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting this in the five issues that we normally would have expected to five or six, however many it is, we're going to get one single issue and then they're going to try to sell us a trade. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I think about that. I guess it's good that you can try it and decide if you like it and then buy the trade. Hmm. I guess it depends but on how the I release guess, schedule I, I, is. I, like you would all, you would exactly, have to give me like yeah. three months before you solicited the trade. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you, it actually, so the concept worked. That would be the only thing to that is yeah. I like the idea of it and I think it's a mm -hmm. great, model for i mean scout's been doing it forever with like their kids books they do that a lot of times you'll see like issue one and then here's the, the collected uh for it and uh but yeah i've always thought it was a neat concept especially as the industry takes different weird turns that we don't expect it to mm -hmm. that this idea of issue one trade uh is great but yeah i just don't know how you pull it off with uh your your order dates and everything yeah, but then, okay, now, that series, though, did actually already come out. So the first issue of that series has already been out before. So I wonder if this is one of those, like, Spider-Man the Black Cat, where it, well, no, there's issue two. I'm, like I'm, I'm jumped on eBay. It's like, like, it didn't finish, but there's issue three. It's supposed to be a five. So you can order one, two, and three on eBay right now. I don't see issue four, though or five anywhere so maybe that's what it is maybe they never got around to finishing it so now they're going to re-release the first issue 
and then release two, three, four, and five, or maybe all five in a trade mm-hmm. separately. So, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, that's happened lots of times before with other publishers and creators. So I'm not a, I don't necessarily like that, but I guess they got us talking about mom breaks the internet right. again. So. <laughs> I'm ready for. Uh, let's see. On my side. I, I okay. Three sixty four. Um, also from Scout, you have Sydney Hammer. So this is apparently for people who like uh, trashy, probably eighties and nineties movies. So you have <laughs> Sydney Hammer, who is a journalist with a hammer, and she goes around fighting monsters. <laughs> Chad, does that uh, does that sound familiar? A, except it was a detective and a hammer. <laughs> right. Sounds a little bit like Damn the Mall. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, also the uh, when Scott was talking about Coins of Judas, uh, that also reminded me of Damn the Mall. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to mention these on page 364. Let's see, is this also from Scout? Yeah, this is also from Scout. They have these two 13 Origins books that are one-shot, mm-hmm. so apparently they're going to introduce 13 characters individually, and even though they don't say that, we can assume after the 13, there's going to be some crossover book that gets all or most of them in it. But apparently the plan is to release these 13 one-shot origin stories for the members of the 13. Yeah, if they don't, I mean, they're they're like months into those one-shots, so they better be doing something with it. Otherwise, I think people will be a little bored with what's going on with that. Uh, so the, so were there some of these 13s last time? Oh, there's time? been probably for the last two or three months, I think. Okay, I, that's the first time I'd noticed them. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know if I didn't pay attention to before that. Was there something that started it? Because I mean, buying thirteen one shots before you have any idea what the story is is a little bit of a risk. So I'm wondering if there was some yeah. sort of like alpha book that kind of started it off, and then they'll end it with something, or what's going on with it? Yeah, nope, I don't. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I'm gonna jump on eBay and see if there's anything that has thirteen origins. <laughs> Origins that is currently for sale. So and no, it's just all of the number one. Some of them at pre-orders and some of them. Yeah, nothing that looks like it's a something that introduced okay. them all at gotcha. once. So at least not yeah. that I'm seeing anyway. So in just a quick search. So all right, I think I am finally done with next right. phase. So are we ready for Marvel? I think so. Yeah, All 25 right. is my first one. Me... Well, I got 1 through 15. <laughs> You're just going to handle all the X-Men. <laughs> the resolicits. <laughs> yeah. Well, are they three? Are these resolicits? Yeah, uh, up until... Uh, okay. So I didn't hardly talk about them last time, so I didn't realize these were resolicits. So um, we got three new number ones. Wolverine, Exceptional X-Men, and Dazzler. Now I, rem- I think I remember the Dazzler now. And I remember uh, Wolverine number one being... Solicited yeah. last time, yeah. So not one, not two, but three <laughs> new X Men number ones, and it's crazy to me that they are so heavily leaning into X Men. It's just like, oh, forget about the Avengers, let's go X Men, <laughs> yeah. and they've all they were in the back of the book for the longest time, and now they're back mm-hmm. up front and center. And I guess it has to be because of the X Men ninety seven animated series. Ah, uh, maybe. Could be. Could the only be. the only reason of anything that's changed at this point that would cause them to move up in the catalog. Mm-hmm. But so, X Men or exceptional X Men. That's a new title, right? That's not been an adjective we've used before, have they? Not that I remember. There's been extraordinary. There's been extreme. I don't remember exceptional. Okay. But then again, there's been so many like yeah. these, like two four issue series that who knows that if there was something that used it before. Well, there's two reasons I'm picking this one up. It's one of the three things I had marked here for the Marvel catalog. A, it's it's number one. It's X Men, and I know this is a big push, so I'm hoping that they put a lot of effort into it. But the writer is Eve L. Ewing, and and I know that she's written comics in the past, but she has. She has quite the biography. She's a professor at, in uh, Chicago for the School of uh, Social Services Service Administration at the University of Chicago, and she she's got some really good credibility. So, plus, 
seeing that Katie Pride is uh, leading a team of the X-Men. I don't know if that's the first time, but it looks like it's going to be a um, mostly, if not all, women team. I don't know. I don't know. It looks like the one person to the second to the right might be a guy with his... I don't know who that is. Well, let's see if I can tell. I probably can't. I see Emma Frost. Uh, yeah, so you got the White Queen, you got Kitty Pride. Oh, I do not remember who it is in purple. That there's so many that have been introduced. Yeah. You know, I just wonder if it's like Kid Omega. I think he might have died. He might have died. Kid <laughs> Omega. Okay. Well, I I, yeah. uh, I don't remember. It, I don't. It's remember. a new title. It's a new adjective, and it's a new mm-hmm. beginning for Mike when it comes to the X-Men. <laughs> All right, quick quiz. Page seven. Turn to page seven. Seven. In your Marvel hymnal. Who is Wolverine fighting? Himself. Oh. oh no. Okay. <laughs> a guy in a sock cap. It's it's a beanie sock cap. cap. Okay. Yeah, it's, yep. it's Shad. There are two there are two <laughs> <laughs> there are two two giveaways about who this oh, guy is. Oh, it looks like is a look at the tail. Is that Nightcrawler? Mm-hmm. That would yeah. be Nightcrawler. And the ears. And yeah. the ears and the Oh. oh, that's right. Only yeah. two fingers and a thumb. And, yep. And notice in the lower left-hand panel, you get the little uh, teleport mm-hmm. away. Little bamf. bamf. So, yeah. Bamf a little. doesn't actually have the sound effect. but So, clearly, this is not a actual serious fight. This is some type of training thing that they're giving us in this art here. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Oh, good good pickup okay. there. I did not well, notice I that. I was yeah. just... No, better for you guys for figuring it out. So. <laughs> Me putting you on the spot. <laughs> hey, I'm done with Marvel except for page 89. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I've got page 18. All right, go for it. All right. And, well, I'm sorry. It's Avengers number 18, but it's on page 23. And it's uh, if you look at the cover, you see that it's Hyperion from the Squadron Supreme. And he's standing over a defeated group of of avengers plus storm in the background i'm not sure what she's doing there but um she's now an avenger oh my Read goodness well. yeah. <laughs> okay so anyway i've i've become i always have kind of uh, had a liking of the squadron supreme because they were the marvel justice league but having mm-hmm. reviewed or read the entire mark grunwald series um <laughs> from the 80s i I'm just going to pick up probably anything with any of the members from that team uh, when they pop up in current continuity. Okay. Um, I've got 25 as mine. And this is the Marvel and Disney What If Donald Duck Became Thor. Um, I, I actually I don't probably won't pick this up, to be honest. But uh, but <laughs> I, I, I like that they're in the business of doing these Disney Marvel actual stories. Uh, this is the second "What If Donald Duck." We've we've gotten these covers for over a year now, and so them actually putting it into story, the Scrooge Infinity Dime story, uh, is you know, <laughs> instead of just randomly on an yes. issue of Spider Man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I love that. I love the cover on the on the, the, the of Avengers. I mean, it, it's it's oh my gosh, it's Spider Man, whatever Spider Man yeah. fifty seven, the the variant cover, and it's got that classic Hawkeye. And Ant Man, mm-hmm. you know, and Hawkeye shooting Ant Man on the arrow. I mean, that's a mm-hmm. great that's a great issue from Avengers, but it's on a Spider Man book. I'm like, I just don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, and this is the last one that I know of that has been announced. Because uh, prior to even this preview coming out, the the what if for Donald becoming Thor had been announced. So uh, I don't know if they'll keep going with this, but I hope they do. <laughs> And then I'm not till 82. Okay, you're before me. Okay. Mike, you got anything for 82? No, sir. All right. All right, 82 is Star Wars The Acolyte Kelnaka, number one, which is a backstory of the Jedi Kelnaka from The Acolyte. Um, if you're not watching The Acolyte, I am enjoying it very much. I did not know if I would, uh, but it has been fantastic. Um, oh. And then on 84 and 85 is Star Wars and Darth Vader. Uh, issue 50 they're both ending on issue 50 so i wonder what this next reboot uh will be for them i'm assuming that they will do another reboot i don't know why they wouldn't uh but 
I don't know what time frame they'll be picking up again. <laughs> Page 89, you have the Halloween Comic Fest books. There's a Fantastic Four book, Spider-Boy, Venom, and then Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren and Spidey and his amazing friends. I try to pick up some of these to give out at Halloween, so I'll be picking up the Kylo Ren for some of the Star Wars trick-or-treaters and the the more kid-friendly Spider-Man and his amazing friends for Spidey fans. I already have some DC books and maybe a Turtles book to give out, so I'll have some good variety now. So I'm done with Marvel. As am I. Same. All right. Anybody got anything from Boom over on Pull? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, 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 And Boom, uh, the major one for me is Minor Arcana uh, number one, which is a new ongoing series from Jeff Lemire. uh, Doing doing writing and arting uh, of everything. Uh, It's it's uh, about a daughter of a small town faux psychic. who returns to take care of her mom and finds that she herself ha- might actually hold magical powers and can help the tiny town that is desperately in need. Uh, this is his first ongoing uh, since um, Sweet Tooth, actually. Well, I I marked it just in case you missed it, Chad, because <laughs> I knew you would. I got I knew you would. Be I got my email from the Jeff Lemire it. fan club, so I knew it was up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Um, and then I in Boom, I also have Labyrinth number one. So they are now going back and doing a full novel adaptation of Labyrinth uh, in doing it in comic book form. So we've we've had the movie adaptations, the sequels and whatnot, but this is actually going through and doing, I think it's, a, it's an eight-issue uh, series uh, on the actual novel adaptation, giving you all the things that got cut out of the movie. Hey, I'm just going to say for the record, if both of you want to read that Jeff Lemire Mina Arcana, I will also pick it up and we could do it on a future episode. Cool. Sounds good. Sounds, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Be Sounds sure you good. order your issues. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I added it to my list. I added it to my list. So I've got it on there already. Uh, dynamite? Anybody? Are there anything else, Boom? Nope. Nope. Any, any dynamite? Nope. 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 All right, let's just rapid fire the rest okay. of them. Uh, Mike, you want to you go first? I mean, I only have uh, two things left. Okay, um, that's all right. Honestly, when you know that generic comics and whatever, it's just it's so hard to get through that because it's so long and you can't really search by any organ, you know, any in any mm-hmm. organized fashion. But anyway, I I have uh, two morals has back issue number one fifty six. And it is featuring two big, big, big characters, the Thing and the Hulk. And it's uh, an exploration of 1980s graphic novels for Marvel, DC, and first comics. And, okay, so I think that the reason I mentioned the Thing and Hulk is because they're on the cover, but apparently they're not really featured inside the book when I look at the solicit, but anyway, it looks pretty cool. I've been buying every issue of back issue lately anyway, so um, uh, it, it's going to be good, I'm sure. Shad? Uh, out of Dark Horse uh, is the uh, Jupiter's, Jupiter's Legacy colon finale number one, uh, which I can only assume is the finale of the Jupiter's Legacy story by Mark Miller. Uh, and uh, I read the first two, I think, volumes of this. There was a third one that came out that I did not. But I probably should catch up on that because I did enjoy all of that and uh, start picking up Finale, maybe. From Keen Spot Entertainment, you have Mark Spears Monsters. Of course, Mark Spears was at Bird Comics Con last year. He's at Superman Celebration this year. He's actually getting his first book that apparently he is both uh, writer and artist and cover artist on. Or previously, he's just really been doing uh, cover art, but we're going to get a play on his Universal Monsters plus um, other monsters. And so we can see here on the cover, we got the Mummy and Frankenstein's Monster and Wolfman and Dracula and Bride of Frankenstein and the creature and one that is for some reason slipping my mind at the moment. But he did a series of trading cards, and now he is releasing a comic 
along with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different covers, one of which is a blank cover. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, definitely want to give a plug for Mark Spears. Plus, he's a good guy. Can I circle back to back issue number one? Absolutely. I kind of now know why I was. It wasn't because the thing and the Hulk were on the cover. It was actually because the it's featuring a an article on the graphic novels from Marvel and DC in the eighties. And I remember buying they were they were basically oversized, kind of like um, mm-hmm. magazine size. Yeah, Talk magazine black size. Yes, I've got initially. yeah, I've got several of them. I've got Emperor Doom from Marvel. I've got and a lot of them were just they were just renditions um, of some established science fiction stories. So mm-hmm. uh, again, I forgot why I had pick this and then it came to me <laughs> uh-huh. that's where we got the death of captain marvel as well was from those oh yeah um, original graphic novels yeah. or marvel graphic novels yes so, yeah. that too first appearance first appearance of the mutants yeah all right mike you got another one you want to throw out there while we're and it's not a comic it's basically i always kind of look out for comic boxes that are have the printing on them and distillery has <laughs> there's a distillery box uh that has it's it's magazine size in other words the the the, mm-hmm. ma- the like we were talking about the graphic novel size magazine size yeah. and it's got the printing of some of their series on the outside of it but it's whew, it's like a hundred dollars for a, a bundle of five so lord i that feels a little pricey it is it is but um yeah so i don't think i'll probably get it but it was worth mentioning Distillery is an elite club sometimes, it feels like. It's right. elite, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shad, what do you uh, got? My last one is uh, Goosebumps Graphics oh, Volume 1, The Haunted Mask. So they're now going through and doing graphic novels of the original Goosebumps series, uh, which as someone who grew up uh, reading Goosebumps, that's uh, kind of cool. Yeah. I did not expect you guys to uh, only have a couple of pieces. Usually it's been me here lately. <laughs> that's, uh, only been having one or two here in the back, but I got a few. So from Dead Sky Publishing, we have Corvus number one. I do not know any of these creators. Buddy Boydoin as the writer. Cover art, Allison uh, Hu. Art by Christopher Sassman. Uh, guy works, it's a video, he works in a video game store. Whenever aliens invade, so <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was just kind of one of those. Feels like it's gonna be one of those kind of over the top type of stories. Then we have from wrong tab. Close that tab. Oh, wrong tab still. Close that tab. Where'd it go? There it is. From Afterlight Comics, we have Silence Number One. This is a three issue series, a psychological horror comic series. So you have a comic book artist, that's the character, not who the comic book artist is, right? Comic book artist has a heart attack, finds himself in a hospital, goes to a small town called Silence, Michigan, finds this amulet, and all of a sudden his angry creations become reality. So, I don't know, premise kind of interested me. Um, Then actually a couple of games this time i hadn't had any games Mm -hmm. to mention so one anytime one of my favorite movies is the first alien movie Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a board game alien fate of nostromo it's one of these it's cooperative until it's not and what that means is that you basically are playing the game together and then suddenly one person switches to be the bad guy and you, the other players have to turn around to try to defeat the, ah. the bad guy. So there's a, um, oh, uh, now that I mentioned it, Betrayal at uh, Hill House, which is kind of like one of the first of these games that I ever played. So if it's anything like that game, this is going to be a, a really, really good game. And the last thing that I have is from a company that needs to change names because they're, the name of their company is Terrible Games. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're making games, that's probably not a that's probably not a good name. But uh, you have here this is a black mold, and it's kind of a horror. Oh, wait a minute! I take that back. This is the co-op until it's not game. So that's why not the alien. So the alien was just because it was alien. Mm-hmm. This black mold. The reason why I mentioned it is because it's that 
uh, co-op until it's not co-op game. So okay, it's got those reversed, but uh, Alien just because it's Alien. Oh this yeah, one because it's one of those. That's one of my favorite games, movies so. too. Sigourney Weaver yep. will always be in my mind one of my favorite actresses. <laughs> Okay, so Mike, what out of this list are you looking forward to? Well, anything in particular? Oh gosh, I actually marked a couple of them down, and honestly, I think I'm going to go with the Sherlock Holmes, uh, the Dark Detective. It's, you know, I, I normally pick a DC, which is really predictable for me, but, um, <laughs> and I did kind of have the Nicola Scott, Nicola Scott covers uh, as a possibility, but I'm going to go with Sherlock Holmes from IPI Comics. Chad, what about you? What are you looking uh, forward to? I would to? say that Minor Arcana is probably my, my number one I'm looking forward to. Okay. You know, I don't know what I am looking forward to. So I'm going to... Well, I guess i got to say Local Man 25 now because it has been volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do that with a straight face. So I'm going to probably change that to the Tin Can Society. I think that looks like, and that's probably going to be like a double pick for me because it's superhero related, but it's a different take on the superhero stuff. So Tin Can Society actually looks pretty interesting to me, both as a future read and as a potential investment pick. So Mike, you got a potential investment pick? It's as it's as sturdy as my usual investment <laughs> picks are. It's the exceptional X Men number one. <laughs> Moving on. I'm glad. Chad. I'm glad we don't have video because if you'd have seen Scott's head just tilt back like what? I, it's a number one, man. You're right, and it is. It is the always, first okay. exceptional collector's item. It's the first one of that title. It is a. It is a volume one issue That's one. That's right. So. Yes. Thank see, you, Shed. See, Mike, you're part. You're part of the problem. <laughs> You know, and that's that's why they keep having new number ones because people keep buying them Dang because it. oh it's a new number one it's got to be worth something. <laughs> okay, what do what, what do I say? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna double down. Minor Arcana is is as my investment and my excited uh, pick on that. I mean, if if uh, Sweet Tooth was Jeff Lemire's last. Uh, ongoing this has some good it's following good footsteps as far as an ongoing with him and of course he has a, doesn't he have a deal with Netflix I don't, I don't know maybe I didn't even realize that the third season of Sweet Tooth had come out it on, did just recently yeah yeah on Netflix I just didn't I, it's like it's been there it's <laughs> sitting there ready to go yeah just because there was news yeah it's just like oh I guess I should watch this <laughs> at some point so <laughs> All right, and Mike, beside, uh, besides podcasts... Oh, no, actually, Chad, what do we have coming up in episode 189? <laughs> uh, 189, we're going to do the first five of Wolverine, as well as volume one of Wrong Earth from Ahoy Comics. And, of course, we're all going to pull those first five Wolverine books out of our That's personal right. collections and read those. Yeah, <laughs> That was a humble brag, Chad. You know, he's like, he can pull out he four can, of yeah. the five. Well... I was not going to say anything. I said we were all going to, <laughs> for the record. Okay, that was the so, humble part of the brag, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Besides podcasts at birdcomics.com, Mike, where, somebody, where could somebody reach out to you at? Okay, so, well, I've got... <laughs> I am going to promote or ask people to email me at mike at Comic Shop Roadshow instead of the old personal account. Mm -hmm. And I... Still have my X account, Mike Atchison Five, but I did just in the last couple of days set up a Blue Sky account, which is just Mike's Comic Shop Roadshow, and you'll find me there. It's still fairly new of a of a social media platform, but it has a lot of uh, comic creators, and um, I decided to get me an account that way. Shad, what about uh, you, you can find me at shadschubert.com. That's S H A A D S C H U B E R T for links to uh, bands, projects, uh, booking info, social media links, all that good stuff. And I'm Scott Reed. You can find me at bergcomics.com, B U R G comics.com with links to my social media and eBay store. And we'll be back with episode 189.
that working? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Just making sure I had waves. There you go. A little, a little movement in the action there, so. Quit making waves, Chad. I know. Always making waves. 